Excuse my attire tonight. I'm uh, normally more dressed up for interviews, but I'm a little under the weather. But I would not miss the opportunity to talk Torah with Rabbi Pinchas Alush, who is the rabbi of the great congregation Beth Tefila here in Scottsdale, Arizona, is a uh, very complicated and broad individual who's Hasidic and rationalist, who is uh, Zionist and religious, someone who is uh, deeply orthodox and tolerant and pluralistic, someone who is uh, very broad Kabbalistically and, ra and, and, and rationally, and all of that doesn't make sense either because those are all boxes that also don't work for him. So right. he's also a dear friend and, and teacher of mine. So um, there's an issue that we all think about today. Every human being, uh, maybe even the animal world, I don't know, but <clears throat> that of love. And I wonder if you could start to shed a little bit of light on some of the Jewish perspectives. I know it's a massive question, but some of the Jewish pr uh, perspectives on the emotion or the virtue of love. Right. Well, thank you, Shmuley, first uh, for that uh, very nice introduction. Look, you're right. It's a massive question on a massive topic, mm -hmm. a topic that, of course, everyone is still grappling with, mm -hmm. uh, including Jewish text. But um, if there is one essence to the notion of love, in my humble opinion, it is um, the essence of giving. Mm. You know, the word ahava, mm -hmm. the word for love in Hebrew, ahava, comes from the Aramaic mm -hmm. word hav, as mm -hmm. the Talmud points out, which means to give. Mm -hmm. The ultimate type of love is a love that gives, that gives in order to give, mm -hmm. not in order to receive anything back. That giving emphasizes selflessness mm -hmm. and emphasizes action which I believe are the two pillars of love in Jewish thought. Mm -hmm. Selflessness, mm -hmm. because um, I'm giving not in order to receive. If I give in order to receive, I'm really not loving. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I am loving, but then I'm only loving the self. Mm -hmm. There's a great parable about mm -hmm. the fish. Uh, there there was, 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 was once a king who loved a specific type of fish, let's call it the salmon. And he ordered his fishermen to go to the sea and fish that salmon. And as the fishermen were looking for this uh, salmon in the sea, they were shouting, yes, the king loves salmon, we better get the best salmon out there, we love salmon, he loves salmon. Finally, they find the salmon, the salmon is fished out of the sea. The salmon, he is the fisherman saying that the king loves salmon. Fish thinks, oh, king loves me, he'll throw me back into the sea. This is my chance for survival. <laughs> in any case, to make a long story right. short, they bring him to the palace. They bring him to the kitchen and the chefs have an argument on how exactly to slice the salmon. So they call the king. They say, the king loves salmon. He knows exactly how to cut it. The king comes into the kitchen. He tells the chefs, well, uh, I want you to slice it this way and that way. And the salmon thinks for a second. He says, oh, the king doesn't love me. He loves himself. He loves mm -hmm. the pleasure that I bring, me, and bring him. So he loves himself. Mm -hmm. True love, love in Jewish thought is a love that's selfless, where the I love you, the I, mm -hmm. doesn't even come into the equation. Mm -hmm. It's all about the you. The so, so, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm saying that's one yeah. aspect. The other yeah. aspect, of, of course, is the yeah. aspect of giving, yeah. of action. Yeah. Action. Mm -hmm. And I would evoke, and I know you want to move to the second question, but uh, you're right, no, it's a massive, yeah. massive, yeah. massive topic, yes. but I would evoke what mm -hmm. Maimonides says, mm -hmm. and what Sefer Achinuch says, and many other... Uh, a book say, but mm -hmm. after the action, the heart fo follows. So if we if we want to evoke love within, we have to act. Mm -hmm. Those actions, those actions of love, those actions of selfless giving, mm -hmm. will eventually give birth to the emotion of love within mm -hmm. us. Beautiful. So Rabbi Akiva famously says, yeah. gadol b'torah, that that the fundamental principle of the Torah is v'yehat l'recha kamocha, right? Loving another like ourselves right and so how does that square with um the selflessness the sense of sense it's selfful i love another as i love myself right so how how, how does it, or is that just a different model that's an excellent yeah. question because you have to have uh, a, a comparative love in order to love um i would say this i think that rabbi akiva's deepest intention mm -hmm. is to love the other like you love not your physical self, mm -hmm. not even your emotional self, mm -hmm. like you love your divine self. Mm -hmm. That divine self is also selfless. Yeah. When I work for my soul, not for my body, I'm working really for something that is greater than me, for God himself. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I should love the other. I should love the other, I should love his divine self. Mm -hmm. I should love the godliness in him. Mm -hmm. 
When I love the godliness in him, I'm not loving me. I'm not loving his bodily self. I'm loving God. I'm loving the God that's within him. Beautiful. And that's the ultimate type of love. And that I also enable my, my soul, so to speak, to mm. touch his soul, my fire to touch his fire. Mm. And that illuminates. Mm. Now, you touched on the notion of Ahava, love as primarily through the channel of Maaseh, through at the world of action. What does Judaism have to contribute to love as emotion? Uh, certainly, it seems that action is primary. But the inner world of love, do we, do we have something to contribute on that? Yes, less than on yeah. uh, the, the action-based yeah. type of love. But the, the emotion-based, uh, look, we're, we're told to love God. Right? We say that in the Shema each and every day. So there is emphasis on emotion. And uh, Maimonides, going back to Maimonides, says that uh, love and fear are the wings mm. uh, uh, with which we fly to God, so mm. to speak. Um, he says that in the forward to his Mishnah. But love is essential. That emotion of love is essential to, to you know, the, the, mm. the person or the the idea or even the God that we're loving. But I would say this, that emotion mm -hmm. alone does not stand a cha chance. Mm -hmm. It always has to be tied to action. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to act in order to feel, and sometimes you have to feel in order to act. Mm -hmm. But if you divorce the two, that's when it becomes very temporary and sometimes even dangerous. You know, I'll, I'll evoke... I'm going back, I know I'm pushing back to the giving, I'm not speaking too much about the motion, but I'll evoke a great story about uh, Menachem Schneerson, the late Mubavit mm -hmm. Rebbe, who was once approached apparently by a young groom who asked the Rebbe, well, um, I hear that uh, apparently it says in Kabbalistic sources that when you fold the talit on Saturday night mm -hmm. instead of Saturday morning after the prayer, you wait for the Saturday night to fold your talit, mm -hmm. then it brings peace in the home, mm. brings love in the home. And the Rebbe looked at him and said, you know what, you're right, maybe yes, maybe no. But if you help your wife clean the dishes, <laughs> then we'll bring peace and Beautiful. love in the home. Beautiful. So yeah. emotion is great, yeah. but if it's not attached to an action, to cleaning right. the dishes, right. I could say I love you to my wife as right. much as I want. But if there's no action, yeah. Part of what's, what's so out. beautiful and counterintuitive about what you're saying is that uh, in some sense, popular culture may say, I don't feel love right now towards my spouse or towards my parents, so I'm going to do a little less, right. right? And in fact, you're saying the Jewish answer is the opposite. The fact that I'm feeling less love means I'm not doing enough. Very good. I have to kind of give more to my spouse, to my parents, to my friend, to my neighbor, whoever it is, because that's how it's kind of cultivated. So it, it, Well phrased. Yeah. Very well phrased. How would you distinguish between, um, a, and again, this is very broad brush strokes, but a Kabbalistic notion of love, Jewish mysticism, versus a rational approach, uh, a more logical, cognitive uh, approach? Another good question. Yeah. Uh, look, the rational approach of love is more or less what we spoke about. I mean, it's logical yeah. to say that actions awaken feelings. Yeah. Uh, the Kabbalistic notion goes a little deeper mm -hmm. because what it does is that it differentiates between the types of love. Mm -hmm. And when you differentiate between the types of love, you're also differentiating between the actions of love that must mm -hmm. follow. So, for example, in, in Kabbalah, you speak of watery love versus fiery love. Mm. There are two types of love, mm. according to Kabbalah. The watery love is love that exists within nature, mm -hmm. that is almost imbued in our DNA. And that is the love, for example, that exists between parents and children, yeah. between siblings. Mm -hmm. I love them, and it flows. That love mm -hmm. flows mm -hmm. like water. Therefore, it's called watery love. Mm -hmm. Then you have the fiery love. And that's the love that you need to work on constantly. And that's usually the love that's fine between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. That's love that needs to be nurtured mm -hmm. all the time. What's interesting is that when you speak of watery love, that love forever flows, doesn't need to work, be worked on too much, doesn't need to be worked on like water needs to be you know, flowing. But, but it doesn't matter the intensity of the love so much. Mm -hmm for uh, the reaction of the mm -hmm. love, for, for uh, the relationship itself. Uh, while for the fiery love, fiery love, it does matter the intensity. The intensity does matter. Mm -hmm. The temperature of it does matter. Because, not to go too deep, but if you feed fire too much, mm -hmm. you burn. Right. If you feed fire too little, 
you become cold. Mm -hmm. So in a fiery love, in a husband and wife relationship, you have to feed that love, but you, have to have to, or you also have to have an element of respect, of distance, mm -hmm. where you say, well, now it's time to back off a little bit, let my spouse mm -hmm. just be, mm -hmm. be with his or her unique differences. Yeah. So it's a very hard balance. I would use Hegel from the 18th century, yeah. who famously asked the question of, uh, what do porcupines do in the winter? Hmm. Because most animals, in order to survive, they have to huddle up together. Yeah. Uh, they warmth mm -hmm. makes them survive the cold of the winter, but porcupines can't do that. They'll injure themselves. So what do they do? Right. They have to find a perfect balance uh -huh. between coming close so that mm. they still warm each other, yet staying far so that they don't injure yeah. each other. Yeah. I think that's the fiery love that Kabbalah speaks about. Yeah, yeah. And so when we speak about that Kabbalistic love versus the rational love, we can also understand that this type of love demands different types of actions, sometimes different types of inaction, mm -hmm. because I need to have that element of distance, mm -hmm. of respect, mm -hmm. uh, while in the watery love, that's mm -hmm. not so necessary. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what you just did, Rabbi Elush? You just led from Kabbalah to Hegel. Now that, I don't know anybody can do that. <laughs> okay. And what's amazing is that in Hegel's notion of the clash between thesis and antithesis, we reach synthesis that it's between these two models of dialectical tension that we reach right. a higher truth. And I think that's what the Kabbalah is getting at also, that right. sense that it's not a pick or choose, it's not even just now this and now this. It's finding that balance and that flow that leads to higher truths and higher connection. Right. Right. Which, I, I mean, it's unbelievable you just yeah. said. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I think my last question for you is kind of a two-part question. Sure. So, um, firstly, and you've started to talk about this, but we have this one word, love. Like my daughter might say, I love hot dogs. Um, you know, and, but we're not just talking about food, we're talking about a spouse, a parent, a child, love right. of God, love of Torah. Is this, is it fair to have the same word of Ahava? I mean, is this fundamentally one thing we're talking about? Or is this notion of love in each relationship and type of relationship fundamentally different? And then the second part to this, if you get to it, mm -hmm. is if we figure this out as Kla Yisrael, as Kol Yoshevei Tevel, as the Jewish people and humanity, what would the world look like? If we started to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I would love the world to figure it out. I would love the world to figure it out because I imagine a beautiful world. Yeah. But I'll relate to your second question first. Okay, you know, great. what says great. that the wise, I'll try to emulate the wise. Not that I'm wise. Uh -huh. But the wise answer the first question uh -huh. first and the second question great, second. Great. So the first question. So look, I think that the Torah type of love, so to speak, is a love that is worked on constantly. Mm -hmm. You see, I would say that the main difference, or, or one of the main differences mm -hmm. between the world type of love and the Torah type mm -hmm. of love, is that the world type of love believes in love at first sight. Mm -hmm. Torah doesn't really believe in love mm -hmm. at first sight. There's an emotion there, there's a click there, but they don't call it love. Mm -hmm. Love is something that is worked on consistently. Mm -hmm. Again, it's like a fire that needs to be fed, or that water that needs to be pushed in order to flow, yeah. whatever type of love it is. But, but, you need to work on it. The more you work on it, mm -hmm. the more you act according to it, the more the love will blossom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I officiate at weddings, I'll tell you something personal. What moves me most is not the love that I see in the eyes of the bride and the groom and that sparkle and even that kiss. But what moves me most is the love that I see in the eyes of the parents mm -hmm. where they're looking at their son or their daughter and they're, you know, shopping nachas, as they would say. Mm -hmm. And then they look at each other and say, you see, this, this is what our love produced. Right. Right. And that's, that's love. And it's, 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 it's hard to achieve. It demands endurance, consistency, resilience. But that's the Torah type of love. Now, if we could work on such a love mm -hmm. that is so selfless and so uh, other-oriented and even God-oriented, Right? If you love the divine self in the other, uh, then the world would become more divine. Mm. The world would become more selfless. The world, the, the world would therefore also become uh, um, a place in which uh, joy and, and celebration mm. of the other is... Uh, is emphasized. Amen, amen. Yeah. That's what we can work towards. Yeah. Beautiful. I, uh, it's a historic day for my family. Today was the first day of school for our eldest child. Oh, and we put her in and I was crying as I walked away wow. from her. Both so happy that she was going off to thrive and so sad that she was moving away from me to some degree. <laughs> and this sense of how complicated uh, love is. Yeah. And yet, 
Um, uh, you know, I couldn't imagine my life without that, even with all the complexity. So, right. so right. thank you. Really a beautiful, beautiful Torah. Thank I, you. I thank encourage you. everyone thank to, you. if you're in Arizona, to come to Congregation Beth to feel out and check out Rabbi Lucia's wonderful synagogue with a new building being built. Uh, and if you're not in this state, then check out his writings. He doesn't write as often as I'd love him to, but when he writes on Huffington Post or other places, it's really uh, very powerful. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so Rabbi much. Lucia. Thank you, my honor. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.